I'm not as worried about the cerebral edema as I was. It seems to be diminishing, but good. Brad continues to have a good deal of discomfort. Well, that's to be expected, isn't it? I mean, after all, three cracked ribs, a fractured skull. Well, of course. We can be grateful the edema didn't affect his eyesight. But still... Well, you judge for yourself when you see it. How are you, Brad? Not too bad, man. Except I'm sore all over. Could be causing that. Well, maybe just a few extra bumps and bruises that you hadn't been aware of until now. I'm a little concerned, Dr. Wilcox. The temperature was normal at noon, then just suddenly spiked up there. I thought the monitor might be off, so I checked him by mouth just to make sure. You didn't tell the patient? No, 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 of course oh, not. All right. Let's check it out. Mr. Clayton, I really do wish that you had not told Dorian Lord that you were Tina's father. Don't you realize how terrible it would be if she were to find out from someone else? Then one of us, or both of us, should sit her down and tell her. I have been trying to determine how that can best be done, but you won't even allow me time to breathe. Well, Mrs. Riley, I think I've allowed you ample time to tell her. Or is it possible that you have your own reasons for not wanting Tina to know about me? I'm going to be taking the exercise class, but I, I just had to stop by and ask you how Brad is. Well, he's doing fine, last I heard. It's going to be a, a long, hard pull, though. Would you tell him that Tell him that I send him my best. Thank you. Of course I will. Good. Well, I better get changed if I'm going to be taking that class. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> Tina seems rather calm and blasé, considering the big new development in her life. What big new development? Why... Her father just suddenly turning up out of nowhere. In fact, I had lunch with him today. He's really quite charming. Tina's father is here in Landview? Yes. You mean she didn't tell you? No, but I'm, I'm sure if she knew that she would have. I can't believe it. Tina's father? <laughs> Showed you a visit, Dr. Vernon, but I want to make some tests. I want a CBC, chemistries, two blood cultures, urinalysis, and a chest x ray. Yes, sir. What is this? I thought, I thought you guys were through running tests. Well, a doctor for a father, you should know better. We've never finished running tests. <laughs> That's right. Actually, your temperature's a little high, and I just want to find out why. Maybe that's why I'm aching all over. Possibly. Walk you down to the elevator, Dr. Vernon? Right. Brett, I'll stop by again the first chance I get. All right. Thanks, Dad. up very suddenly. I don't like it well. Symptomatic of some kind of complication. Let's hope it's not a serious one. Mr. Clayton, why would I want to prevent Tina from learning about you? To keep her for yourself, of course. Oh, you speak as if she were my possession. Oh, no. No, Mrs. Riley, don't misunderstand me. I'm not accusing you of having any ulterior motives. It just occurs to me that it's possible that 
you care so much about Tina that you really don't want to share her with anyone else. I don't want her life to be upset. And that, it seems to me, is what you are bent on doing. But as you said, if she finds out about me from some other source, isn't that just going to upset her even more? Mrs. Riley, I'm as uncertain about all this as you are. I have absolutely no idea how Tina's going to react to me. Well, if, as you say, your number one priority is Tina's welfare, then would you do me a favor? And before you see Tina, talk to someone who is a good friend of mine. He's the chief of staff at Landview Hospital. He's also a psychiatrist. Why? Is Tina in therapy? No. No, she's not. But Dr. Vernon knows her very well, and I think we could all benefit from his advice. What's the matter? Well, I have to tell you, I... Uh, I really don't put much stock in the opinion of psychiatrists. Would you at least listen to what he has to say? All right. But can I talk to him right away? Yes, I'll call him right now. Come in. Vicky, we gotta make a decision on these new advertisements. Oh, sorry. I, uh, I didn't know you had someone with you. Sorry, Clint. This is Ted Clayton. Uh, this is Clint Buchanan. He is the executive editor of the Banner. How do you do, Mr. Clayton? Nice to meet you. Clint knows who you are. No. Yes, I, uh, I told her not to move too fast. It's, uh, it's been my experience that it never hurts to sit back and consider all, all sides of the situation. Well, what's to consider? I am Tina's father. I guarantee you I'm not an apparition and I'm going to be around here for a long time. You see, Mrs. Riley, I want my daughter's love. Now, I promised you that I'd talk to Dr. Vernon and I will do that, so don't worry. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Buchanan. Mrs. Riley, would you ask the doctor to call me at the hotel? Soon. Oh, Rob. Hi. What's the matter? Don't you say hello to your friends anymore? I didn't see you, Tina. Sorry. Of course, uh... I don't know how I could have missed you in that outfit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. You're forgiven. So, tell me, where have you uh, been hiding yourself lately? <laughs> I must say, the girl must be equipped with radar, the way she zeroes in on the nearest male. <laughs> I think the last thing in the world she needs right now is a father. Are you sure that she doesn't know about him? <laughs> Tina wouldn't be able to keep something like that to herself, Dorian. Hmm. I wonder why Vicky hasn't told her. Oh, hi, Mrs. Lloyd. Oh, hello, <laughs> Tina. Uh, Sam, Nick wanted to know if you had the schedules for that new exercise class, if, if they were up here. Yes, I ran off some copies this morning. Excuse me. So, Tina. Tell me what's um, new and different in your life. Not much. Oh, Sam, did I tell you I had a real nice talk with your dad? He is just great. He's so understanding and sympathetic. And uh, how was your Aunt Vicky? I uh, saw her eating in the same restaurant as I was this afternoon. She was with Clint Buchanan, though they were so busy talking, I didn't want to intrude. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. Every time I go in her office, he's in there. I guess they're settling the fate of the world. <laughs> Tina, I think this is the schedule that Mick was looking for. <laughs> Dorian, you'll be a lot happier when you stop interfering in other people's lives. And when and if that day comes, I'll feel a lot more comfortable with you. The nerve of that man. Really, the nerve of him. He completely ignores his daughter for 16 years, and he shows up here and expects me just to kick over the apple cart. You know what? I think you ought to hire yourself a private investigator and let him go to work on Mr. Ted Clayton. No, I don't think so. Why not? Because he would find out he was being investigated, I would be the natural suspect, and I would certainly feel a backlash. You mean from Tina? Yes, from Tina. She's going to find out someday. 
And even as difficult as she's being right now, I love her very much, and I don't particularly want to do anything that would turn her against me. Oh, Clint, I wish Joe were here. He would know what to do. He could talk to the man. He could size him up. I'm sorry. It's neither here nor there. Well, thank you for all your help. I'm sure I'll find a way to deal with this. Of course you will. Let me make some inquiries on my own. Does Richard know about this? Yes. Good, then I'll put him on it. I won't bother you with this now. You can look it over at your convenience. Thank you. You know, the terrible thing is that I can't stop Tina from going off with a total stranger. I mean, I can't forcibly detain her against her will, can I? I guess the only thing to do is to try and reach Dorian, see if I can't stop her from spreading that story around. She said she was planning on spending the afternoon at the health club. He can probably reach you there. Thank you. Gina, just a minute. I, um, just wanted to say that really, working at the health club has done you a lot of good. You've become a woman overnight. Well, thank you. And, uh, would you please tell that to my aunt the next time you see it? I will. Landview Health Club. Sam, it's Vicki Riley. Do you know if Dorian Lord is there? Yes, Vicki. She's right here in the office. Could I have a word with her, please? Certainly. Hang on a minute. Dorian, it's Vicki. She wants to work with you. I wonder what she wants. Well, I'll, I'll be downstairs. I'll be right back, though. All right. Hello, Vicki. <laughs> what an incredible coincidence. I was uh, just talking to Tina before you called. We were having a delightful conversation. You were? Yeah. Oh, she's become so grown up, so mature. But you, you know, I was amazed when I found out that you hadn't told her about her father. Dorian, that's the reason I am calling you. Oh, don't worry. I didn't say a word. But I can't understand why you're keeping it from her. But Ted Clayton seems like such a charming, such an attractive man. I... I don't see why she wouldn't welcome him with open arms. Dorian, I sincerely appreciate you're not telling Tina. I assure you I intend to break the news to her when I think the time is right. Now, her father and I have been in touch, and we have agreed to handle this in the way that will be least hurtful and least shocking to Tina. Well, don't worry. I, I won't tell another soul. Thank you, Dorian. Oh, my goodness, I just realized. I did say something to Samantha. This was before Tina came in. You see, I was sure that Samantha knew because she and Tina are such close friends. Ah, oh, dear, dear. Is, uh, is she nearby? Could I speak with her? She just left the office, but I'll tell you what. I'll see if I can find her for you. Okay, hold on. Oh, Samantha. Uh, Vicki wants to speak to you. Oh, all right, thank you. Oh, Mrs. Lord, will you do me a great big favor? Will you sure. tell the class that I'll be there in just a minute? Oh, I will. In fact, I'd better hurry and change. I'm going to be late myself. Better. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Oh, Meg. Meg, you didn't have to come down this trouble. You didn't have to come up here. And, well, in fact, I, uh, why don't I take these schedules and I can pass them out to the people as they arrive? Mm -hmm. Well. Can wait till she Tina, has. don't do that. <laughs> well, nobody's around. I don't care. Well, I guess I don't care either. After all, you've been replaced. What are you talking about? I have a new lover. Or at oh. least I'm working on one. Uh, oh, really? Who? Johnny Drummond. Johnny Drummond. One date does not a lover make. <laughs> but I know what makes men tick. And then you just push the button, hmm? Well, it worked with you. But it never will again. That's what you think. Right, Vicki. Well, don't worry. I, I won't say a word. Thank you very much, Sam. I knew I could count on you. Bye-bye. Well, we bought ourselves a little bit of time, at least. Neither Dorian nor Samantha have said anything to Tina, and they promised that they wouldn't. 
speaking. I've got Clark Williams in my office. Abbott, don't you ever knock anywhere? Oh, I'm sorry, Vicky. It's all right, it's all right. Well, listen, isn't this the guy that you wanted to sign for that new column? Yes, Richard, but... Well, we can't take a chance on losing him. Now, look, I just thought that maybe if you just go out in the hall and stroll by my office, just happen to see him in there, go in and introduce yourself. Richard, I am up to my ears at the moment. But we can't take a chance on losing him again. Besides, he just said that he's probably going to leave for a cabin somewhere up in the Maine Mountains tonight. Well, for heaven's sakes, I can certainly take the elevator to the fifth floor rather than have to tromp through the Maine Mountains. Hold the fort. I'll be right back. Have a coffee? No, but you go ahead. I'm sure Vicky won't mind. Well, she looks like she didn't get a wink of sleep last night. Well, would you have? You know about Ted Clayton, don't you? No. What's going on with him? Well, the cat's damn near out of the bag. That's what. Now, we've got to move fast. We? Yes, we. She vetoed my suggestion to hire a private eye to check up on Clayton, so I want you to do some detective work. Quietly, if that's possible for you, and see what you come up with. Gotcha. Now, look, you're staying at the Ambassador Hotel in Philadelphia. You can start there. Okay. And Abbott, don't mess this one up. Don't worry, I'll be so discreet, I'll be practically invisible. See you later. Tina's father? And she doesn't know yet? That's right. But the problem is, is that Dorian does. She met him this afternoon, and somebody introduced him as Mr. Clayton, and... Well, you see, Vicky just doesn't want this information to go any further. Well, I certainly won't tell anybody. You know something? This might be exactly what Tina needs. To distract her from us a little bit. Mm. Give us a little time alone, maybe. Mm. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> yeah. Carla, this is beautiful. Uh, oh, Jack bought it from Africa. On a camera safari in Kenya before we were married. You sure you want me to have this? I'm going to keep a few pieces for myself, but I want to give most of them to friends and people that he admires uh, and a few museums. Thank you very much. Did you know that he tried to get you as head nurse on his service before you came back? No. Of course, Peter Jansen wouldn't hear of it. I really wish I'd known. Plus the fact, my life might have been a lot less complicated if I hadn't gone back to work for Peter. Jenny, I don't think so. I don't think it would have made any difference. One thing I've learned in these last few years, you can't run away from your feelings. Yeah. Well, when do you think you're going to be able to come back to work? I don't know. There's so much to do, settling Jack's estate. Can't your lawyers do all that? Yes. But I would prefer to do it myself. It must be very difficult for you. I consider it a labor of love. I want to do whatever I can to perpetuate his memory and inspire other people to follow in his footsteps. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to get into a speech. That's okay. <laughs> so, I uh, understand that Karen has been discharged. And she's back at Ina Hopkins. Yes, she's very happy and excited to be back on her feet again. <laughs> and, of course, all her friends are there. Oh, yeah. Though I must say... <sighs> what? I don't quite understand why Ed continues to live there, especially since he wants to get elected as lieutenant governor of the state. Well... Well, I've never seemed to me the type that would put a lot of stock in appearances. Oh, that's not quite the point. You see, the voters do. They pay a lot of attention to appearances and to a candidate's association. Oh, well, it's none of my business. <laughs> How's Brad? Well, he's, he's doing, I think, as well as can be expected. Um, it's going to be hard for him. Ma seems to feel that he's turned himself around. He took religious inst instruction while he was in prison, and, um, well, he has a lot of plans for himself when he gets out of the hospital. And in the intervening time, of course, you can reassess your situation. Yeah. 
I think the things happen for the best. I just wish that I had had another chance, a second chance in, in my relationship with Jack. Oh, well. I, I didn't want to get into that subject again. <laughs> May I look in on the baby before Twist. I leave? Twist my arm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll continue to monitor Brad's vital signs. And we'll know more tomorrow when we have the blood workup. Your analysis should tell us something right away. Yes, if it's positive. Excuse me. Dr. Wilcox, Brad's temperature's up from uh, almost 39.9. BP has dropped to 90. All right. Get me the results of his urinalysis as soon as possible. And let's change his IV, increase the fluids, and we'd better start him on broad-spectrum antibiotics. Right. Let's take a look. I feel really strange, Dan. What's the matter with me? I feel like I feel like I'm burning up. Well, your, your temperature's gone up a little bit, Brad. That's all. We're trying to pinpoint the reason for it. Probably some minor infection. Look, Brad, there's nothing to worry about. Everything's under control. <sighs> One Life to Live will continue in a moment. Of course, in most child abuse cases, the kid is usually so scared his parents are going to retaliate when they get him home. I know. Do you know when I asked him how he got hurt? Poor little fella bit his lip, burst into tears, and wouldn't say another word. No. Captain hmm. Hall? Hmm. The resident on duty says that you can speak with the little boy that we brought in. Good. Give them about ten minutes to let him get settled, and then check with the floor nurse. Okay. Right. Thank you. Oh, nurse. Um, listen, how is he? Do I dare ask Ed about Mary? He's so sharp, if I even mention Jenny's baby, is he going to guess the truth? Looks like I'm not gonna make my dinner appointment tonight. Oh, something special? What, dinner? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Trina is cooking up uh, something special for uh, Karen's homecoming. Ed, what's your opinion of Katrina Carr? Oh, I think she's a terrific lady. A little flaky sometimes. Well, uh, you think she's got her personal problems squared away? What kind of question is that, Doctor? Trust me. Well, okay, so she's been in a life, and I've seen a lot of women go back to it, if that's what you're after. Well, I know uh, a lot of them get out of it and stay out, don't they? Yeah, yeah, Karen did. Of course, I guess she's kind of a special case. She had a lot of support from Mary. And... Uh, I hear uh, Katrina has a new boyfriend. Uh -huh. Yeah, she's going with a guy. Well, don't you think that might uh, help her settle down? Yeah, well, it might, it might, except she has a little problem with men. I mean, trying to sustain a close relationship, you know? This guy gets too serious, she just might take off. Plus the fact she's, uh, she's always been a rebel. Keeps bad-mouthing conventional relationships like, uh, marriage. Yeah, but that could be just talk, right? Hmm. And maybe she secretly envies anybody with a successful conventional relationship. Yeah, 
Yeah, that could be. That could be. Look, we're uh, sounding like a couple of amateur psychiatrists here. Now, uh, what, what, what's this all about? Ed. Hmm? Oh, hey, Richard. Hi, I'm glad I finally tracked you down. Yeah. Hi, Peter. Hey, how are you, Richard? Uh, have you got a minute? Sure. Uh, I'll tell you what. Why don't you take my seat, Richard? I've really got to get back to work. Uh, oh, Peter. Uh, uh, I'll tell you what. We'll, we'll talk about that later, all right? Oh, hello, Peter. How are you? Good. Dr. Wilcox, how's the bird not good. Temperature's up, BP down. I'm afraid of septic shock at this point. What do you think it's kidney failure? That's one of the possibilities. We're running tests. Okay. Will you keep me informed? Sure. Will. Thank you. So I was hoping you might be able to help me. Okay, so what's the problem? Clint wants to know everything we can find out about a man named Ted Clayton. Um, apparently his first name is Theodore, although I'm not even sure of that. Well, what else you got on him? Uh, he's in his early 40s, uh, apparently in the import-export business, currently registered at the Ambassador Hotel in Philadelphia and has a home address in Seattle. And I was hoping, Ed, you might be able to do just a little informal check for us. Well, maybe. You'd give me a good reason. Well, he claims to be Tina Clayton's father. Vicki, I assure you that he volunteered the information and he in no way indicated that it was supposed to be a secret. I believe you, Dorian. Oh, well, thank you. And I hope you will keep it in strictest confidence, at least until I've told Tina. Oh, I will, I will, I, I promise. But if he is going to go around town just dropping this information on everybody he meets, then... Well, I know. I'm going to have to move fast. Tell me something. What did you think of him? To tell you the truth, I was rather impressed by him. In what way? Well, he's very gentlemanly, very well-spoken. He's certainly very knowledgeable about his business. Which he told you was what? He's an importer of art objects from the Far East. Well, at least that jives with what he told me. Oh, it's the truth. I met him through Dr. Franklin. Uh, Ted Clayton has a Buddha that the museum wants me to buy for them. Is it valuable? 15th century. You know, Dr. Franklin was very impressed with Ted. He said even before the museum had the piece authenticated that Ted knew its exact dollar value. Vicki, why do you think Tina will be so shocked about her father? Does she think he's dead? She's never known for sure. He left the family when she was three years old, and there has been no contact ever since. That's been a long time. Yes, so you can imagine how traumatic it could be for her, and how shocked she might be when she finally comes face to face with him. Dr. Vernon, I might as well tell you, the only reason I'm meeting with you is that I promised Mrs. Riley I would. She seems to think it's going to be a terrible shock to Tina when I present myself. Well, I don't doubt that, Mr. Clayton. After all, 16 years without one single word from you? No, wait a minute, wait, wait. Don't you see? I presume that Tina's mother was still alive. And you have to understand that when our marriage broke up, there was a great deal of bitterness on her side. It was not the kind of situation where I could just drop in casually from time to time, or, or even keep up a correspondence. But, but that's all in the past. Uh, the point here is that I, I somehow have to convince Mrs. Riley that the longer she postpones this, the worse it's going to be when I walk in and announce myself to Tina. And I promise you, that is my intention. And my patience is wearing very, very thin. <laughs> Mr. Clayton, you seem to have the notion that Mrs. Riley is being unusually possessive about Tina. Uh, well, isn't she? No, not at all. Well, something is certainly holding her up. Tina, herself. She's in a uh, state of very sensitive emotional balance. Has been ever since she came to live with Vicky. But why? Do you really have to ask that question? Deserted by her father? Look, I'm not being judgmental. I'm only reciting the facts as Tina knows them. At 17, her mother dies, and she is thrust into a family of strangers. 
On top of what you may or may not know, Mrs. Riley's husband, with whom Tina had become very attached, died last winter. No, I didn't know that. All right, well, uh, perhaps I can't understand the cause for Mrs. Riley's concern, but, but still, I... Dr. Vernon, did you ever know my late wife? Briefly, yes. Very lovely woman. You know, the last letter I received from her was, was pitiful. I've been haunted by it ever since. Mr. Clayton, tell me a little about yourself. Well, why should I? Well, the more we know about you, the, the better Vicky will feel. Well, what would you like to know? Any relevant facts about your life in the past 16 years? For example, did you ever remarry? No. Why not? Well, I, I never met the right woman. Frankly, no one could ever measure up to Irene. Well, if you cared for her that much, why did you leave her? Oh, no, I didn't. Well, I... I am the one who moved out of the house, I admit that, but... You have to understand that uh, we were growing apart long before that, Dr. Vernon. And, of course, as soon as I moved out, Irene moved back with her family right away, which is what she'd been wanting to do all along, I think. And you feel they interfered? Uh, they maybe turned her against you? Oh... Uh, yes. I was always an outsider. They never approved of me as a husband, socially or financially or any other way. They disapproved totally when Irene left college to marry me. But I left the seminary for her. I left the priesthood for her. Look, I don't see the point in going into all of this. Is it really that painful? Yes. Yes, it is. Is that so hard to understand? All right, Mr. Clayton. I won't bother you any further. Thank you for your time. Well, what's the verdict? Verdict? Are you going to recommend me to Mrs. Riley? Am I finally going to be allowed to see my daughter, or have I just <clears throat> jumped from one power and wealth situation into another one? I'm sorry, I don't... I don't understand. Irene's family took Tina away from me before. Is history going to repeat itself? Is Mrs. Riley going to try to do the same thing? She isn't. The hospital called to add some sort of emergency about Brad. How bad? I don't know. She didn't wait for details. She just left. Uh, Nick, what do you think would happen if, if Brad... What do you know? Do you, do you think Sam could handle it? I think she could. With my help. Oh, Nick, I... I wish you didn't feel so guilty about us. Well, I don't know. I don't think uh, a little guilt ever hurt anybody. But what happened between us was so beautiful. I mean, every night I... 
I dreamed about being in your arms, and, and you were so tender and, and loving, and I, I just can't imagine how you can turn around and walk Tina, around like this. Tina, Tina, I tried to explain to you before. I, I know that, they, that you love Sam, but how can you love her and make love to me? Yeah, can't you? And you would. You'd do it again in a minute, wouldn't you? Tina, would you please just get out of here? And I know very well that I can't control your sexual urges and that you will sleep with whomever you want, but not in my home. And on General Hospital. No, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Some men don't like to hit women, but I don't mind at all. You know what? You'll never be free of me. I'm never going to give you a divorce. Ryan's Hope, General Hospital. Weekdays. I can't imagine where my father is. You know, he's supposed to meet me down here at 6 o'clock, and... I don't know, Dr. Wilcox is too busy with Brad, so he can't tell me anything either. Honey, you want me to go see what I can find out? I was going to go upstairs anyway to tell Mom I'm going to drive her home. Would you mind? Not at all. Oh, thank I'll you. I'll be glad to. Oh, Carla. Peter, hi. Do you know anything? Yes, as a matter of fact, I was looking for Sam. Why don't I tell you both at the same time? Sam, I was just with Dr. Wilcox up in ICU. He's with Brad right now. They think they've isolated the problem. It, it seems to be nothing but a simple bacterial infection, and they've caught it early enough that they think that the chances for recovery are very good. Come on in. All right. Six o'clock, time to knock off. Well, I was just waiting here, hoping Will Vernon would call. You haven't heard from him? Nope. Of course, that can only mean that he's still with Ted Clayton, that they're trying to make some sense out of this whole thing. Well, he knows how anxious you are. If there was anything to report, he'd have been in touch. He also knows that I'm going to have to tell Tina just as soon as possible. Clint, too many people know about this. I'm terribly afraid someone is accidentally going to let something slip. Who all does know besides you and me and Will and Richard, of course? Well, uh, Dorian. Becky, Samantha, and I expect she's told Mick Gordon by now. 
By the way, I meant to tell you, Dorian came by this afternoon to tell me that she certainly wouldn't say anything to Tina. I thought that was rather nice of her. Uh -huh. Hi. I was nearby and I thought that I would... I uh, what, what's the matter? Nothing at all. You took me a bit by surprise. Why don't we go home? Dear Lord, please be with Brad now. Give him strength. And if it be your will, spare him so that he can turn his life around and prove himself to you. I really believe that's what he wants to do. I really believe he has finally put his trust in you. comes up with a wildly funny medicine when he discovers he's allergic to Mindy on Mark and Mindy. Then Benson goes ghost hunting when the craziest things start giving the staff the spooks. Sunday, Hal Linden turns song and dance man on a high-stepping tour of the most exciting places in New York in Hal Linden's Big Apple. Now stay tuned for General Hospital following FYI, next on ABC.